in the future, our world is gonna look a lot less like the regular army and a lot more like the special forces. What do I mean by that? Well, the conventional regular army, at least in the United States, is composed of large units of men and women who go out and do different things, whether it's fighting, it's engineering, it's logistics, it's communications. The special forces often operate in smaller teams, sometimes group as small, groups as small as 12, sometimes groups as small as three, to do very specific missions. These smaller teams are more agile and in certain situations more effective than a large force can be. I mean, think about it. You can't take a division size element, roughly 14,000 people, into a foreign country without the foreign country knowing about it. <laughs> You're not gonna hide 14,000 people anywhere. But a team of 12 that's sent in to do a very specific thing can be done. So what does that mean for the rest of our world? Well, look at how it's played out in the business world. For years and years and years in what Seth Godin would call the TV industrial complex, companies made their money by mass marketing pretty basic and dull products. Until we got to fast forward to 2017 where for the most part, most human beings in the United States have what they need and most of what they want. Now what they buy is usually luxury. In other words, the, even the things they need are usually handled by a, a brand that's a leader in that industry. But the people who are able to be successful, who are newcomers to the game, are folks that work outside of the constraints of conventional organizations. Think about what the iPhone did to the way we communicate with one another. Not only did it become the way we communicate in terms of replacing the telephone, but it's now become the remote control of our lives, and now it's the arguably the most profitable company in the world. But I think in the future, one of the problems that I see with the, the entrepreneurs, the business owners, and even the entertainers that I help in the social media space is they're trying so hard to get this exponential growth so quickly by targeting, what's the biggest group of people that I can target? Well, the problem with that, if you look at, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a gentleman by the name of Moore who shows this basically this bell curve of how people get into products or services or get into fads. And it starts with the innovators and the early adopters, and then it moves into the regular people. And what most people try to do, because the biggest part of the bell curve is the regular people, what most people try to do is create something vanilla that will attract the bell curve. But here's the problem, the bell curve's not paying any attention to you. The mass market is not paying attention to your new hip hop album or whatever it is that you're creating, whatever it is that you're trying to get people to pay attention to. The only people that are gonna pay attention to what you're doing are the people that are highly interested in something specific that you do that either no one else is doing or no one else can do better than you. And so what I mean in the future is communities, whether it's online, through social media or what have you, are gonna get smaller and smaller but more plentiful. And so the faster that you can get traction with a specific group of people, and that's not to say that from a specific group of people or a niche, a niche, if that's what you want to call it, that's not to say that you can't expand and explode from a niche, but you won't explode trying to, ma to market to millions and millions of people who couldn't care less about what you do, what you sell, what you're talking about, or how good you are. And I truly believe that when it comes to even, like, even if you look at how human beings interact, like forget about marketing and social media, for example. When you look throughout history at human beings' problems with getting along, I think it stands to reason that there's something to be said for people who are like-minded, hanging out with each other, and not trying to mix with other people who think violently different from them. And now, by the way, let me be very clear because there's some nuance to what I'm saying. I'm not saying that there's no value in cognitive diversity. Nothing could be further from the truth. I keep people in my camp who look at things differently than me and can critique and get me to see things from a different perspective. I do not keep people in my camp who don't share similar values. Like I even keep people in my camp who don't share my beliefs but we agree on certain values. Like I have friends who are atheists, but by and large, they believe in doing right by other people. I can get along with them. They don't have to believe in God the way that I do for us to get along. That's cool, because we share similar values, similar outlooks. We have similar goals, we have similar interests. 
and I've just I've seen it play out too many times in schools. You always end up with the popular kids, and then the drama geeks and the nerds, and that all of the you try to put all these people together in one school and get them to play nice in the sandbox. I just don't. I think history has shown through war and conflict and political unrest that this just doesn't work. That in the future technology is going to enable us to shun people we don't want to be around and that's not to say that you don't show those people love and respect not at all it just means if you are able to choose like if you are 100 percent of the time able to choose who you spend time with wouldn't you and wouldn't that group be significantly smaller than the masses there's just people I run into in my life who God love them, I respect them, I love them. They're not people I would hang out with in real life. We just don't have anything in common, no similarity. And instead of trying to force these New York City style metropolises to come together and get along, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, people can get along to the point where they're not usually killing one another because biology, you know, the way God fashioned our biology kind of limits our willingness to kill each other. But playing together nice in the sandbox is a whole lot easier when you're playing in the sandbox with people that you get along with. You know, there's something to be said for it. If you could just find one place to stick the Hillsboro Baptist Church and just let them have all their hate and all their foolishness separate from the rest of the world and they're not affecting anybody else, let them have that corner of Alabama or whatever that nobody cares about and just never go there. You know what I mean? Like, I just think the world would find a way to get along easier if we weren't trying to force ourselves to be around people who we just like. I'm very rarely ever gonna like ambitious politician personality types. I'm not gonna hang out at social dinners with people who say they wanna change the world but what they really have in mind is their own personal interests. And they'll say whatever it takes to get votes. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with those people. Now, if spending time with those people in the short term helps me help the world, sure play that game for five minutes, but I ain't going to be hanging out with them. I'll love them and respect them. Probably ain't going to like them very much. So the world is going to get smaller. For those of you who are in marketing, go after the small groups who, who are adamant about what it is you do and love it and love them. Just make stuff for them all day, every day, because as Joel Salatin teaches, it's a whole lot easier to sell a product to someone who's already bought from you than to go out and convert someone who ain't buying from you into a customer. And as a person who runs his own business and sells things, I can tell you that's been true 1,000 billion percent of the time. That ain't a number, I don't care. Same thing goes for finding a career. Don't go try to work for a company that doesn't share your values just for a paycheck. If you're trying to go to a company that is, you know, clubbing baby seals and turning them into peanut butter, and that's not your jam, by all means, don't. Even if they are paying you $100,000 a year. Six-figure salaries ain't all they're cracked up to be, my friends, believe me. My first crack at making six figures back in the day sucked. I hated every minute of that place, except for the few moments I got to spend with some of the people I actually liked. So... You know, same thing goes with relationships. Why are you spending time around people who don't have your best interest at heart and don't share your values? If you are, I don't know, pick a thing that you're really into. Like if you're a vegan and you think people that eat meat are wrong, hang out with vegans. Now granted, every once in a while listen to somebody who eats meat because you need to have people who challenge your perspectives from time to time to keep your mind sharp. By, by all means, don't spend six hours a day hanging out with them. They're gonna get on your nerves. And, you know, in life, we have to chase the things that bring us joy. And here's why. I don't, not, not pleasure, joy. And I'm going to do a separate video about that. We have to chase the things that bring us joy. You know why? Because God wired us to find joy in the things that make us the most healthy. Giving, for example, makes you feel good. Imagine that. It's good for your health and it's good for other people on the earth. It just is. So anyway, I love you guys very much. Remember, do the unselfish thing. Share this with three people who you know will get something good out of it. If you did not think this video was dope, do not subscribe because I don't want to waste your time if you think this is just mediocre content. If you did think it was dope, subscribe because more dopeness is on the way every single day, I promise you that. And that said, my friends, get out of brother on Instagram while you're at it. And for my marketers who might be watching this, you need to check out my social media, Ninja Academy. 
on my marketing website link in the description below near the bottom you can click it check out the social media ninja academy check out my free ebook the youtube survival guide for you gamers out there hit me up either in dm here on youtube or you can email me and i'll send you a copy of the youtube gamers survival guide i have a, i wrote that first and then converted it into the youtube survival guide if you're into youtube and you want to grow it book's completely free i'll get you a link to it you can go download it read it it's awesome it's a great book. It's been reviewed a couple different places. It's been given props by the one and the only, the great Tim Schmoyer, who brought me on his channel to talk about it because he knows we make quality and he's had a serious hand in mentoring me, so he knows what I make is quality. Anyway, I love you guys very much. Remember that we are stronger than I, and as always, I'll see y'all tomorrow.